Once again, we'd like to welcome everyone to Randy and Candy Yao's Extreme Desire podcast, where we meet, talk, learn, and hear from some of the legends and people in the real world of hunting, where we keep things down to earth with real people. Well, we're here today with one of my best friends in the world, Robert Bonine, and Candy, as we all know. She's one of my friends too, but <laughs> sometimes <laughs> <laughs> if she behaves, yeah, when she's behaving. Yeah. But what we're going to talk about is um, we got some pack stuff set up behind us, and the mule over here, and we're going to do a little bit of a series on packing. Um, we get asked a lot, a lot, you know, about backcountry stuff, and you know, it's not always on horseback and stuff. But Robert does it a l way more than the rest of us, and. See, we've been hunting together now for 40 years. Or 40 so. years. They're giving their age away. I was just a little guy. <laughs> yeah, 14. <No. laughs> He's 14, 14 years old when we started hunting together. But, yeah, yeah, and then, but I knew him before that, ever since I was just a little kid, and my dad was an outfitter, so Robert, and he hung out with Dad and Stan yeah. Thomas and those guys when they were running dogs and everything else in the world. Yep. We started hunting over in Idaho a long time ago. Early 90s. Might have been even the 80s. No, it was the 90s because I've got a picture early, of the oh, tree very that you curved your <laughs> the dates in. We went there for about 10 years straight. Yep, 10 years. Up in the Frank Church Wilderness. and Been to Montana, Wyoming. Wyoming. Nevada, Arizona. New Mexico, Chicago, Arizona. Arizona. I mean, yeah. it, pretty much yeah. every well, western state. Yeah. Nevada. Oh, you yeah. said yeah. Nevada. <laughs> yeah. We've packed in a lot of different places, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So, but it's a lot of work. It yeah. is a lot of work. So, but it's. But the work's a lot easier if you have someone that really knows what they're doing, like Robert. And so, rather than just maybe going out there and trying to do it on your own, we thought maybe this series might be really helpful. So. Yeah. Get yeah. you interested anyway. Yeah, you're still, so you're going to New Mexico every year still? And yeah, I don't know about this year yet. I haven't heard oh, from yeah. Tom. Yeah. But I just heard from Robert Muller back in Idaho, I mean, Indiana. His, his last daughter and him drew again with first time applying. Wow. And have done it two years in a row now. But wow. um, he left a message. He's hoping that I can get, come down and help. You know, be there to help and stuff. So. And then the Gila's there. And yeah. the Gila's, yeah, packing there. I love packing there too. But it's yeah, Robert a, goes down and been going there every year, guiding and pack, and packing, running, running the camp for Tom. Yeah, and packing up in the Gila's there, and that's some great elk hunting. It's just hard to get tags. Yeah. yeah. But we've been there lots of times. Yeah. A lot of fun. But yeah, so we're basically gonna just through this series start a from scratch. Um, yeah. He'll show you different types of equipment that we use and that he uses and the reason he likes it and or doesn't like it and so on and so forth. And it's his opinion. Yep. Or my opinion. And if it won't be mine. It's not we're not gonna say that it's the only way, but it's right. our way and whatever works for you. Yeah. Right. And everything and when you do it a lot it you learn to simplify certain things. Well, one thing we know is there's nothing that replaces experience. So if you yeah. can read all the books you want, and you can watch this, and you can do all that, but until you go try things and do them, yeah. there's nothing that replaces experience, I'm yeah. telling you. That's true. And practice, yep. that's what it boils down to. Yep. It's like, and then when you're standing there with your boys, one on each side of you, watching your pack horse buck over out of sight, <laughs> you, you, you don't want to get discouraged. And quit. No, no, and, and you're going to have that. I mean, we have yeah. seen some, Hellacious we've seen wrecks. some terrible wrecks, and we've been involved in <laughs> terrible wrecks. Yeah. We've had some things. It's just you know, things happen. Yeah. Stuff happens. Yep. Yeah. But it's the old meal you hear over here. She's stomping around, but. Yeah, it's um. One time, Robert and I took off at the Frank Church, and we rode in 30 miles, and we left that morning. We were the last ones to leave, but I think we passed everybody <laughs> on the way in. Yeah, in different stages of a rack. <laughs> <laughs> one time there was a horse 
Robert goes, look down there, and there goes a horse floating down the river, unconscious. <laughs> and pretty big. soon it comes to, yep. starts splashing around and comes running out of that river. But yeah, it's yeah, it happened. Crazy. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we could tell stories all day about right. some wrecks. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the one with Justin. Yeah. Our buddy Justin, he goes with us one time and he finds this cooler, little cooler, and we left it there all week because we were hunting. And when we came back by the lake, he goes, I want to get that cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the mule, obviously. <laughs> anyway, he wants to get this cooler, so he's on this horse that's about half green and I'd already been out to the truck and I stayed there. Robert went back with Justin to get another load and Justin picks up this cooler and that horse is looking at it all nervous, all nervous, all nervous. And Justin got the fumble around and drops the cooler right underneath that horse. It was like a bomb going off. Well, the horse shot off over there and Justin mm -hmm. shot then, off. Then she just dogged it and, and he harpooned right off of her. On a rock. Her splat. And Robert comes riding up to me. He goes, we got a problem. Justin don't know if he's a boy or a girl. <laughs> He is out of it. And then Justin said something about getting bucked off. And he says, Robert says, you didn't get bucked off. You landed where the horse used to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so what do you suggest Well, people pack on? Horses, mules, whatever works? Whatever works, but um, everybody should start with horses more than a mule because the, <clears throat> I, I have a lot, a lot of people tell me I'd like to get a mule and I say well sometimes mules aren't for certain people you know exactly. that's and sure. that's true you got to basically be smarter than the mule or think faster than the mule thinks and or at least understand them yeah or understand <laughs> them and stuff I mean you get them like her I mean she's seen everything in the world and stuff and my grandson rode her into the Snake River Wilderness here a week ago went on, on a trip and she's a great babysitter but then I've seen some that are far from a babysitter right oh yeah speaking of which on that trip you still got a mule over there yeah I still got one he I should have known better because I watched him one day Jake and I were sitting there and in a Christmas trail mm -hmm. run through the can river I mean the ranch there where we had the old ranch and he walked up there and I seen him look up to, towards the ridge he went about halfway and I didn't think much of it. I was just watching him. Next day, he did the same thing, but he went farther. He went clear to the top of the ridge, and I, th I thought he's up to something. And he came back, and he was with everybody and everything. And next day, he, we got up to leave, and he had already left. He's doing a walkabout, and so I'm hoping he backtracked out because I'm going to go back over and look for him. There's a herd of horses there that one of the outfitters has got in, in on a feet, uh, allotment and all the gates are open so I'm hoping he he's there. Yeah, that's Otherwise, crazy. Otherwise it's going to be a long ride to Christmas Landing on the Snake River. Because <laughs> them things just don't leave the horses. No. That's what's so weird. Yeah. We've been at this but, a long time and it's just it yeah. just don't happen. The mules just don't leave the horses yeah. especially if he's the only one loose. It's just yeah. like what the heck. But I it's a typical young John Mule. They're so inquisitive, mm -hmm. especially him. I mean, he's into everything at the house. If he can see it, figure out what it is or what you're doing or something. But I, <clears throat> I know now that uh, he's going to find himself a prisoner in camp. <laughs> <laughs> prisoner of camp. Yeah. And everything from now on because he's yeah, just too he's inquisitive. Not gonna be, he's not going to have free run no, no more. No. If, you, if you get him back. Yeah. Maybe. But I've lost three others and got them back, so yeah. done the same thing except got away from us, you know, and then took off. But, you know. Yeah, we've lost some that died too up there in the yeah. mountains a time or yeah. two, and things happen, so yeah. you just never know. But it, And we, everybody, I mean, we'll get in talking about it later here is the starting out pack, and, you know, you might only have one animal, so the best way to start is with uh, saddle panniers. That way you can use your animal to pack your camp in and then pack game out if you get it and then be able to have a mode of transportation too, you know. Right. And everything and see if that's really you know, mm -hmm. what you want to do and everything. Right, because we, we do that a lot too. I mean, we'll have our 
saddle panniers wrapped up behind the saddle and we can ride out and go hunting and and then if you kill something you can at least get it back to camp on the horse's back instead of your back yeah yeah it sure is a help but. so um I mean, I know what they are. I've used them lots, but let's just say I didn't. So what is a saddle pannier? Well, a saddle pannier is, is put on a riding saddle. Um, the style that I've designed and built is, uh, most of them come as one piece, and they're hard to deal with because you've got to stand there and put each item in the, each bag, and then you don't know if you're balanced. And the ones I use, I've made them so they, the bags come off of a base unit that sits on the saddle. Um, nice thing that I do with them is I don't tie them on because uh, you're a leading animal and then if something happens generally you can uh, get away from your wreck or they can get shed of the, if they have an issue whereas a regular pack saddle or something the loads are tied on them so either you got your stuff strung from where you were to camp or where from you camp wish you to were. where you want to be <laughs> and stuff, and I've seen that quite a bit in oh, different yeah. outfits and everything. But and then there's basically two types of pack saddles. Now, I mean, there's variations, but your sawbucks and your deckers. And, um, the main we find the use is uh, sawbucks. Now, almost everybody uses sawbucks. I mean, round and stuff, but. Uh, the Decker saddle is preferred. I prefer it myself. It's more universal and there's things you can do with They both can do the same things, but uh, which we'll show later. Uh, one of the problems with the sawbuck saddles, if you gall your animal, you're pretty much stuck. Whereas with a Decker saddle, if you gall your animal, you can readjust Move the rigging around. on it and um, get it so that you're not irritating the animal on a problem you've created or something. Right. Yeah, and you go on those long trips, you can you can get some hot spots and sore spots yeah. in a Real lot quick. of places in yeah. a hurry. Just yeah. like people with their boots or their backs yeah. rubbing wrong. It's no different yeah. with the horses yeah. and mules. Move that cinch around and yeah. it, where it rubs on their butt and the whole nine yards, everything yeah. is, it don't matter. We're get some sore hot spots, but, but we can, we'll get the camera and kind of just show them. Some of Talk the options. Some. some of the yeah. options. At least the beginning options. Like yeah. you said, we'll be doing a series, so we'll go yeah. further down the road after this one. But Right now we're just kind of talking a little bit, and then on the next one we will actually start putting stuff on the animals and yeah, showing and them showing each them one exactly. put on. Yeah. But, so you have to stay tuned for the, the whole thing. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> the final one will be when we go elk hunting this fall and we got elk scattered all over them. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they're not scattered. <laughs> hopefully they're on the mule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, we, like I say, we've done a lot of hunting in a lot of different places and a lot of packing and a lot of different wildernesses throughout the, yeah. the whole west and it's just been a lot of fun. We've enjoyed it and we've helped just a lot of people. It's not just always our tags. It's yeah. just getting to go and do a lot of things. But now we do these ladies hunting camps where right. Robert will be doing demonstrations there for the gals yep. and different things. But The ladies love that. And, but I think they are, and one reason we're doing this, a little bit afraid to start it by themselves unless they're just using the panniers. Right. So, and I agree with them. You certainly don't want to get in a terrible horse wreck and ruin your whole hunting trip so a little knowledge would help out a whole lot yep yep it's like i say there's no nothing no substitute for experience that's right i'll it's never like, do that again yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of really good elk callers yeah but not a lot of really good elk killers so i mean yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know it's like you got to get out there and yeah. try yeah. it out so anyway but we'll We'll go over there and start looking at some stuff here. Yep. Now we'll shut her down. Here we have a, a set of saddle panniers. The design, most of them, they come with a double slot like here in the back. Mine I made it with, so it stays on the saddle horse so there's no slippage and everything. And it just fits the base unit here. Just fits on the saddle, just like this. bag on either side and then 
with the buckles like this, you can get your load already loaded and all weighed up, and then right. come up and hook it on. See, these just unbuckle. Yeah, they just basically unbuckle like that real quick. You can put your meat in there. And then they got on the ground to get it all loaded. Up. You can strap this up good and tight, and then you can hoist it up on your animal and just buckle it back on. Yeah. And instead of having to leave the saddle panniers on your animal and then you're hoisting up into them. Yeah, on so, the load, but also if you've got camp, it's yeah, putting one item thing. in here, one item on the other side. Same type of deal. Yep. And then you can weigh them out if you want to, if you're gonna go for a long run and you guess you're gonna use your riding saddle. So explain that a little bit, Robert. You talked about balance and why is that yeah. important? Well, balance, there's everybody, and when I do a clinics and stuff, I, we talk about balance. Well, not all the times we'll use 50 pounds, for example, uh, on this side and 50 on that side. Everybody thinks that's a balanced load. But if this 50 pound load is this wide and this one over here is that wide, your center of balance is over here. It's still off. It's Killed off. Her. So that's what you've got to take in consideration when you're doing balance loads. And the same if, if this one happens to be riding a lot higher than that one, it throws you off kilter. Right. They need to Vice be hanging first. about the same height. distance, height, right. you know, on the animal too, you know, up yeah. and down, because it on makes that. a big difference. And then, and then some of the other stuff we'll get into later on that um, style. But then um, we'll go back over here to the most commonly used is the sawbuck saddle. And this one here, it's, it's a typical sawbuck saddle. It's double rigged. You can see it's got two cinches. The cinches are supposed to be hooked together. And that, and this is the front of the saddle and this is the back. And so one goes under the heart, heart girth and the other one goes pretty much on the barrel of the animal. And then the sawbuck here that we have is a single rig. This is the front. And it only had the it one cinch. It only got the two. one cinch, but there's no adjustments on it. It's just where you've got it sitting. Okay. And then your Decker saddle is a single rig saddle here, but it's adjustable. So you can adjust this rigging on the animal where it fits him correctly, or if you need to adjust for a a gall spot or something like that on that. While we're here, I'm going to say probably 99% of the people using Decker saddles have them rigged wrong. And that is, is when they buy them, um, they manufacture or whoever does it puts this rigging on the outside of this and a, a typical half, this is called a half breed, has a 1x4 board on it. And then they strap that and they cinch that down on the animal. Well, that's, um, and they say, well, that's the way the saddle come. But that's incorrect because you take a, your riding saddle, be the same principle as you putting that on your animal and then sticking a one by four under your cinch and then cinching it down. And it's not comfortable. No. <laughs> so, but, Might when, off. but when the Decker brothers designed their saddle, they were packing cast iron mining equipment and stuff. And it was easier to replace that board than it was to replace leather or uh, canvas and stuff. And so, so they went on that away. And uh, it's just, uh, to me, it's a more efficient way of uh, using a pack animal. You can do more, you can do the same thing with this saddle as you can this. It's just a little more difficult. Uh, on certain things, and we'll get into that down the road, many packing especially. And it seems like these ride a little more comfortably on the animal. Yeah. You know, but. On that part. Then, with either these or this saddle here, there's basically three types of loads you can go with. You can go with your herd boxes, or you can go with soft panniers. The soft panniers are similar to like the right, the, what we just did on the riding right. saddle. So these you can load up, you put your loads in here, and get it all cinched down, and we weigh them, 
and then we can strap it onto that decker or, or the saw, saw buck. buck either one you slip it over those and that <coughs> things and nestle these you know there's two of these and you can do that we can put a cooler in there whatever we've done that yeah. a lot or those there actually the hook up with these little hooks on the deckers and they'll go onto the decker or you're gonna have to get a different <coughs> loop that'll hook up over, over the these. saw bucks <coughs> so yeah and then the other way which is i prefer to do is the manny packing and what you do is and we'll get into showing how to do that but you can take bigger objects that you can't get on your cooler i mean your hard panniers or your soft panniers might be too long or Odd whatever shapes. and you can manny up a load and uh, get it to fit on both sides and uh, another thing about adjusting these we'll get into is uh, if they're not the same weight you can raise one higher and one lower to get your balance and everything on that these are just some of the items different ways you can go you know like you said this is about as basic as it gets um, they work well you know if you're just gonna go lead you want to go lead an animal in and save your pack your camp in on this and then when you get there you can go ride your horse and do different things you can ride out and go hunt if you kill something get it loaded with meat and come out I mean it's a great way yeah. to for a beginner just to get started yeah the nice thing about I mean even I mean starting this way you're gonna have a nicer camp oh you yeah you're and more put, comfortable right you got because you can bring stuff that you can't pack on your back right and you can still have a load on your own back yeah, if you want exactly. and lead the horse Maybe. with your other all your other gear and <coughs> you can just go in further and stay longer is what yep. it boils down to yep. um you know we're trust me we've done a lot of stuff on our backs too we're yep. dumb enough to do whatever it takes to go out there and kill a whatever we're after you know so yep. um there again that's what what we do is we're, we're always trying to be just a little further or deeper or inaccessible areas you know we know a lot of guys gung-ho on their back with their back pack frames and we've done it plenty but we've done this a lot and this helps save the body a little more yeah but so you can go basic you can go with a decker saw bucks you know whether you use pannier bags or boxes or whatever but like <laughs> say we're gonna <coughs> go through and we'll start show you how to put it on an animal each different one and how to adjust it and how to get the britching and all the different terminology and all the different items that you use and how to fit it properly from start to finish and it'll probably be i don't know whatever it takes three yeah. three or four parts and yeah we just kind of wanted to tell you what we're going to be doing and show you some of the junk and this is pumpkin pumpkin punk Pumpkin. Pumpkin. She's a sweetheart. Pumpkin. She pumpkin. saved us Not a pumpkin. lot of blisters on our feet. That's pumpkin. Then we got a great big one out back called Killer. <laughs> I'm going to call him Hunter because Killer makes me nervous. <laughs> Especially since he came out of bucking stock. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a genuine bugging horse. I hope not. Yeah. But Then I got one at home that I'm doctoring that's going to be long process <laughs> yeah yeah that was another thing they lost an animal went over run over rock bluff went over rock a bluff 15 foot drop that no broken bones yeah just cut up on one side pretty got much a, got up on a steep hillside in the slick mud and the horse lost his footing and he did correct it yeah didn't get stopped and he went over it's just you know that's one of those things accidents can happen so yeah the things you got to think about and are you willing to you've got to be willing to handle it and you know when things go wrong you got to just deal with it and move on you know don't yep. panic yep. and keep your head about you but you know don't matter what you're doing things can happen so yep. i had a when he's talking about that i had a i was heading to, on my way to new mexico and a friend of mine from medford called me and he says asked me what i was doing i told him and he says how was your trip and i just been on a trip and i told him i said if i was just beginning packing I would quit, come home, sold everything I had, and take up knitting. 
<laughs> it went that right. well, huh? <laughs> but yeah, when you think knitting. I huh. can, you know, there's got to be a solution <laughs> to get things corrected. And after that, it went fine. But sometimes right off the bat, you think, why am I doing this? And so that, I got it figured pretty much my stock now that what happens and who causes what and everything. Well, that's good. Well, anyway, so riding saddles, what do you suggest for backcountry? I mean, I love this saddle. It's a great saddle, that higher back, and yeah. that just is so comfortable to me. Well, the main but, thing about, and, and I'm dealing with a guy right now, uh, and uh, let's take this off. When you look, if you're looking to buy a saddle and everything, I prefer what they call a slick fork. I mean, and uh, to me, they're more comfortable than one with swells on it and everything. I've got swells on mine now. And they're swells? called buck and rolls. Are the uh, right and they, here when you see these up? Yeah, that are built in the saddle. Right. But mine are right here. But this saddle here is what we call three quarter rigged. And a lot of the saddles that people are looking at are what called full rigged. This rigging is clear up here right off of the t end of the tree. And they're more for arena type work than anything else. Because when you're putting a lot of miles on them, this is right up in their armpit and you can gall them. And the saddles, and so if you can go with three quarters or seven eight or five eighths, you're better off. It holds your... It holds your cinch further back on the animal so it's not right in that yeah. crease. And we'll show you when we go to pack on her, we'll put a pack saddle on her in the short time, I mean the future, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as getting the saddle to fit in the right spot and everything. And then a lot of them are, this one here is double rigged um, as far as the back cinch. I personally don't ride with a back cinch because back cinches were made for ropers. And uh, they, uh, um, so I just, I eliminated my back cinch and I get along fine with it and riding. And we put on a lot of miles in, in a day, a lot of times. And it's, you know, we're talking about all the saddles and all that stuff, but whether you have horses or mules, mules or whatever, yeah. you got to keep them healthy, fed up well. And Robert is a farrier. And, what can you say about their feet? Well, I mean, I mean she's, I'm getting ready, to, I'm going to shoe her tonight, but um, you want to keep them trimmed up. And uh, most of the times, if you don't know the country you're going into, you're better off to have your animal shod because um, if you wind up barefoot and loading and you use them all the time, they wear down, then they get sore footed. And then you're up a creek, especially yeah. if you're in the back country a ways and got a sore footed animal um, and everything. But, it's it's critical because um, no foot, no horse. You know? Oh, it's just like us. When you get when you your get feet a, get so sore and you can't move, you're done. Yeah. And the same with them. Yeah. So, you know. And then watching your, I mean, your top line. You know, any spot that might rub or whatever, especially in the heart girth area right here, um, galling. And a lot right. of people. Uh, that's why I'm real. I mean, this is one thing I talk about a lot is people get their cinches too far up here in the armpit of them. And that's when he was talking about that three quarter deal earlier yeah, on, on the saddle. riding saddle. You know, if you if it's three if it's straight rigged off of there it comes down here. If it's three quarter rigged it comes okay. down here a little further back. Yeah. And it's still in the heart girth. So because this is the barrel, I mean what we call the barrel here, and then your heart girth and she's got a nice long heart girth. So you wind up with your cinch right back here, then you don't stand any chance of galling and everything. Well, that's good. Anyway, so that's just what we're planning on doing. And the next one, we'll start out. We're going to start with the very basics from a riding saddle, how to put it on the animals, and the panniers for the riding saddle, and, and then just work our way through the whole process. Yep. Hey. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast, and remember, it's not always perfect, but it is always real with extreme desire. Please always remember we cannot continue without social media these days. Once again, we ask that you like us, Randy and Candy Yow's Extreme Desire, on Facebook, 
follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please check out our website, ExtremeDesireTV.com. See you next week, same place, same time.